Pi 392 here, and here I am introducing Toyota's 1HD FTE engine. Before I move on, of course, I have to explain to you what 1HD FTE actually freaking means, or else it's gonna be a long video of some dude rend rendering about some gibberish. 1HD FTE stands for 1 in the 1HD means the first iteration of the engine. HD is the family of engines by Toyota. We then have the F, which is the fuel economy based 24 valve double overhead cam variant of this engine. T in the, uh, in the FTE stands for turbocharge. Of course you would. Then we have E, which is the electronic uh, fuel injection pump. If you ever paid attention to the internet or Instagram, you'll probably find uh, people playing with these engines to heights that you've never really seen people push other engines. Of course, there's 4JJ1s you could play with, but those are small compared to this monster. FBI, open up! Let's go over why people go goo goo gaga over the FTE, starting with the block. The block of the FTE. It's, let's just say it's got quite a reputation amongst four-wheel drivers and people who like to play with a little bit of tinkering or cowboy tuning. Now, the 1HD FTE, um, why, uh, why am I keep saying FTE? Um, uh, the 1HD FTE. I'll just say, uh, say it as FTE to, you know, make it easier for me through the edits. Now, the FTE, getting back to that. The FTE, of course, has a cast iron block. Now, cast iron? It's pretty thick as well. I don't have a sonic testing device like PRP or Motive Video have. I'll, you know, click up there if you want to watch what they do. They'll explain to you way better than this idiot can why block structure is quite important. Now, going past that, we go to the ribbing of the block through this picture over here. Now, the ribbing, of course, is pretty well done. You can see... Uh, lines coming on, helping to structurally support the FTE's block, from block twist and all that. Now, there's also another secret to one of these engines. If you pull apart the bottom end and to uh, take the sump off and everything, you will see a you will see a massive girdle. Now, that girdle is there to provide strength for the FTE's block. If this thing needed a fucking girdle in the first place. Now there's one little thing that I can't really confirm through my research. As you can see in this picture of a bare block, you can see that the pistons are slightly touching each other. Now that looks like 2JZ Siamese bore to me. I've tried to contact people in the industry to ask if they are actually Siamese, but no reply. My guess is it's probably Siamese. Way to go Toyota! Putting your 2JZ's massive, massive uh, strength advantage into your diesel. These were also pretty stout in terms of how they were oiled. The oiling system in the FTE is pretty competent. Why, uh, why am I saying competent? It's one of the best. If you see through the, uh, this teardown of a bare block, you would see massive oil holes through, uh, through each and every one of the holes. Now, this provides excellent oil flow and oil drainage back to the sump. Which is a problem most uh, missing RBs have. <coughs> RB26. Something I kind of forgot to touch on when I was talking about this entire uh, engine block design is that it has an oil cooler integrated into the side of the block. Now, it's over here on the passenger side or driver side, depending on which, uh, which uh, side of the country you live in. But it's a pretty bulletproof solution compared to, say, other diesel engines of the time who run an external oil cooler to somewhere along the lines of the car. Now, that will make it super messy. Now, the connecting rods in the FTE are still pretty strong. They are shaped much like an H-beam rod, as you would see in aftermarket performance uh, connecting rods. They're pretty good, actually. Then we move on to the crankshaft. Now, the crankshaft is a high-strength forged steel item with seven forged crankshaft journals and 12 balance weights. No wonder this thing still gets up the speed smoother than a four-cylinder 2.2. Means more strength, which means you won't experience any- Now the FTE has this little passage in the oil gallery that allows it to be cooled by engine oil. 
Now that has, brings several benefits. It, once cooling is down, you can push way more power and more boost through these engines. That's why if you see people who tune these things, they push them a little bit more than they do the T and the FT. Now, if you're any fan of the 1HD family of engines, you'll probably hear of the massive failings of the 1HD T in the 90 to 94 80 series. Now, the major problem of these is that the main bearings, the main caps, happen to just shear off. You'd see bits of metal when you take that engine apart at 100,000 kilometers. Now, the issue lies primarily by the different oil grading systems between Japan and Australia. Australia uses the API system, whereas Japan uses the JSO standard. The oiling system seems to be a non-issue in these engines with massive oil journals uh, going from the block to the head and back. Now, if you start this car from a dead cold start, this thing will generate oil pressure in about 20 seconds. That's pretty fast. You can't stuff enough power to that bottom end with air restrictions, it's completely effing useless. Much like a crossflow head. Well, now the FTE then has a 24 valve cylinder head that's driven off by one camshaft. Genius piece of work because you don't have to spend extra money on a second camshaft that makes it ultimately wider. <coughs> Coyote 5 liter. Damn boy, he thick! Now to the intake side. The intake valves are 33 millimeters in uh, diameter, while the exhaust side are 30 and 30.5 millimeters. They flow fairly well for a diesel. In fact, they are pretty uh, pretty good. If you see people racing, they're still using the stock cylinder heads without extra porting, uh, extended valve uh, <laughs> Now, moving on to the engine. It's milled from a solid chunk of aluminium. This thing is heavy in the hand. That piece looks like something you would put in, uh, in a shaved engine bay of someone's uh, race car. It's very, very well done. Now if you turn your attention to here, the ports for the cylinder heads are arranged rather oddly. They seem to be turned 45 degrees from the traditional method of being straight and parallel with the cylinder head. Now, according to independent people who know better than me, they say it is for a swirl effect. Now that swirl effect means that it is a lot more efficient in terms of its breathing, so it makes more power that way. I can't confirm it, but I'll link you down in the description to the post that said so. Now obviously we touch on the injection pump, which is the most crucial part of any diesel engines, common rail, uh, injection pump, or otherwise. The injector pump in the FTE is an electronic variant, which is a big step up to the FT, which is a mechanical fuel pump. The injection pump uh, working cycle is a little bit more complicated for me to explain, so I'll link you to a guy I saw on YouTube explain it a lot better than I can down in the description. Now the injection pump on the FT versus the FTE, it, as you can see right here in this little form I found on a repair manual, it is definitely a big jump in pressures. The jump in pressures is about 31% from its predecessor. Now the benefits of higher injection pressures are very simple. Power! The more efficient the burn, it means more power. And the more efficient that burn is, it's obviously a lot cleaner as well. Now the injectors for the FTE are obviously changed as well to accommodate the new electronic fuel pump. Now if you see in this diagram here, the FTE seems to have a smaller, more focused area of injection. No wonder the pressures are way up compared to the old engine. Turbochargers for the FTE. Well, there are three main sort of variants. The first one being the one you find in the IFS 100 series, which is a CT20B paired with an intercooler. If you have the Ute version of this engine installed, which is the HDJ79, you will get a CT26. Now there is one quite weird anomaly in the Euro market. Bruh. In the later model ones, they have a VNT Turbo for the first time to the FTE. This was a Garrett GT23V. There is not much known about this variant, other than it's the only FTE factory VNT option. Now FTE's 100 series run between 7 to about 9.8 slash 10 pounds of boost from factory. The 
GT26 runs probably around 7 PSI, a more conservative number to prevent knock, because the FTE with the CT26 did not come with an intercooler. why this FTE video was even created in the first place, the modified scene. To give you context for any Australians, New Zealanders, or even Americans watching this, good day mates. Saba has a very storied history of four-wheeling, with the Borneo Safari being the most prominent event in the whole of the country. It is the most brutal test of man and machine working together in harmony to pull off feats of tackling up both obstacles through mud holes, bloody rivers for God's sake, and the rainforest you will ever see in Malaysia or even Southeast Asia for, for that matter. Why I'll touch on this legendary event, haha, <laughs> proud Sabahan moment, is that these competitors at the top level have always used 13BT engines back in the olden days when they were competing at the top of their class. Nowadays it's a lot different, though I don't see any 1HD FTEs competing in competition trucks at the top level, probably due to its weight. Apparently it weighs about 400 kilograms. Not really good for weight distribution, isn't it? Now you're probably wondering, what can I do to this little FTE motor? Quite a bit. While I was researching for this segment, I came across an article by a couple of lads down under called G Turbo. Now they make diesel uh, diesel turbo upgrades for Toyotas, Nissans, Mitsubishi's, Isuzu's, you name it, they probably have it. And they managed to squeeze an unbelievable 414 horsepower and an insane 1200 newton meters from a stock engine FTE. That is insane. For a petrol, a diesel no less is even more insane. Now this uh, was achieved with high flow injectors, a front mount intercooler, a less restrictive exhaust system, and of course a much bigger turbo. Now obviously that is an insane number to achieve, but if you are after a more touring sort of setup or a towing rig, you could of course get a remap as a viable option. Now, a remapped ECU will net you about 21% of increase in torque, which is quite a big jump, which just shows you how restrictive the factory tune was. Now, if you still are listening and are a power junkie, you are in good hands, since if you think a stock FTE or 414 horsepower isn't enough for you, well, you could do away with a little stroker kit upgrade with Diesels Unlimited uh, doing a 4.5 uh, stroker kit. You could go 1 BD FDE hunting if you're interested in that. Basic achievements with the FD are few and far between. Kinda obscure, but if you dig deep enough, you will find some gems. Like, for example, Chris Hawkins with his Quick 79, QIC 79. With a best mile per hour and quarter mile of 1098 at 126 miles per hour. To give you context of how quick that is, that is faster than the 2018 Porsche 911 GT3 RS. Now, hopefully this video convinces you of the FTE and its greatness. You may be interested in buying one after this. Good luck. Premiums for these things are definitely Race Wars level. And if you enjoyed the video, please click like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you think I should make more videos. If you think I've done anything stupid or have done anything wrong in the video that may be inaccurate, comment down below. And also make sure to keep yourself to be quite respectful and don't be a massive, massive ass. ass down below. Confirmed. Or a palui if you're local. Anyways, peace out.